When I finish my park run, I don't know if you're the same, but I just start thinking about lunch. So why don't you join me for some great post park run refuel ideas for you and the entire family. Hello there, welcome along to another Cook Along with Co-op. I'm Jenny Falconer and I know what it's like. You know that moment on a Saturday morning when you get back from park run and you have to start cooking lunch or brunch for everyone and actually sometimes you don't want a big hassly meal, you just want something quite simple. Well, this one is just for you. It's a very special dish that's so easy and luckily we have an expert chef that is here to guide us through it uh, because today we have our top chef from the co-op. We have Stuart with us. Hello there, Stuart. Hi there, Jenny. How are we doing today? excited about the recipe that we're going to be following with you today. It's, it looks like a really fun, easy meal that can be tailored as well, depending on what your tastes are and what your likes and dislikes are. Yeah, it's a really good one pot dish. It's all cooked on the stove. It's not too much mess um, and it's nice and simple. It's traditionally made with um, tomatoes and peppers, um, along with some smoked paprika that we have on, in our recipe today. But this one's got more leafy greens and vegetables in there. Um, so it's just a really sort of interesting take on this dish. Okay, and the good thing is we're going very international today because this is an Israeli dish, isn't it? What's it called? Shakshuka. Um, although some people actually, because of the amount of green veg that you can see in front of me, some people call it the green goddess shakshuka, don't they? Uh, yeah, for this version, yeah. Okay, well it looks good. It looks like you could certainly get your five a day from it. Do you want to talk us through and let's get started? Yeah, so we're going to start with the spring onion and courgette in the pan. Um, so we're going to get that onto a nice high heat. Um, I've saved okay. some of my spring onion to the side so that uh, I've got some to sprinkle on at the end for a bit of texture and a little colour. Just a little bit of garnish really. So we're going to get that pan nice and hot. Okay. So we put some oil in there first? Yeah, just about a couple of teaspoons of oil, not too much. Okay. So we're going to give that a couple of minutes to get hot, but we're going to start by frying off our courgette and then we're going to go in with our spring onion. You should just hear a little bit of a sizzle. How many courgettes do you have? How, uh, so this is one courgette and I've just sliced it up. Um, you could do more if you were sort of making up this recipe. So we just want to move it around a little um, and get a little bit of colour on it. Nothing too dark because it's going to be in the pan for a little while longer um, with the other ingredients as well. How long does this meal take to cook all together? So this meal is probably going to take more like ooh, 20 minutes to half an hour. Um, but it's quite a sort of simple one to, to, to keep going with. Just courgettes at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, we're just softening this off. Um, once you start to see a few little spots of colour on there, a little bit of golden, we'll go in with this spring onion. I'm just going to sprinkle that in. Once your spring onions have been in for another two minutes, we're going to go in with the uh, quarter sort of shredded uh, Savoy cabbage, and we're just going to pour that straight in. I mean, we're, everything is just going in one pan and that is it. It will start to sort of pile up, but as it cooks, it'll soften down and you'll get a little bit more room in there. So I'm just going to move it around just so that some of the cabbage is getting to the bottom of the pan. And so that's starting to cook. Once your Savoy cabbage has started to sort of wilt down slightly, it won't be cooked through yet, um, but we're going to pour in our tinned tomatoes. You could use tin chopped or tinned plum. Uh, it doesn't matter too much. And what we're going to do now is just sort of bring this up to the boil. Just get it nice and hot. And you'll notice as well the pan's cooled down massively now, so you'll need to really turn up the heat to get it boiling again. Right. Ready. So once it's boiling again, you're ready to stir in your peas and your spinach. I've got roughly a handful yep. of spinach. I think this is about 50 grams. Um, and that's going to go straight in on top. Okay. Uh, along with about 150 grams of peas. But again, this is only a sort of rough guide. If, you, if your family aren't a big fan of peas, you could put a bit less in and maybe put a bit more of something else in there. You don't mind if frozen peas are fine, are they? 
peas, as they get older, they lose some of their nutrition. So frozen peas can actually be better in some cases. So, yeah. Oh, really? Now we're just going to stir this together until the spinach starts to wilt down. Will it just be a meal on its own? I think for me, I'd go this with some flatbreads, just with a little bit of flavour on, maybe some herb or tomato flavoured ones. And it just really make a nice sort of addition to the dish. How nice is it to see a really colourful dish as well, you know, because I think it's very easy nowadays to get food that's quite beige when you're just cooking something quick and simple at home. So it's, it's lovely to see so much colour. Yeah, speaking of colour, I think we're going to add just a pinch of smoked paprika now. Now, a lot of people will just sprinkle this on at the end. But if you add it while it's cooking, you really bring out a bit more flavour and it really runs all the way through it. You could actually, at this point, put in a little bit of chilli powder or some chilli flakes or even a bit of fresh sliced chilli um, to sort of spice it up and make it nice and interesting. Oh, that's I quite like to add some chopped chilli. That would be lovely. At this point, you want to sort of be reaching like a nice wilted down state. Everything fits in the pan nicely and it's getting softened. But you might want to keep it going a little bit longer. Look at that. Yeah, that looks great. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add a little pinch of salt, not loads, just enough to bring out the flavour. We want the dish to be sort of simmering gently. I'm going to make four little holes to add the egg in. It doesn't need to be too precise. As long as there's sort of a, a place for it to rest, that's great. So does it not to the bottom of the pan? Uh, it can be, but you, want a, you, you sort of want a little bit at the bottom. OK. <laughs> I hope this is right. This, this is the only bit that's probably a little trickier than the rest. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take each of our eggs and crack them into these holes. So the easiest way to do it is actually to crack it straight onto a flat surface. So just give it a little tap and you'll hear it break. Pop your thumbs in, push and oh, I've, I've broken mine slightly here. <laughs> See, I would always do it on the edge. OK, right, this is... I, I, I mean, for me, I just find it a little easier and then the egg just sort of pulls apart. That kind of worked. <laughs> I'm just going to cover this over and what you're doing is you're letting the steam from the pan cook the top of the eggs. So you can use a lid. So can I just put the lid back on? A lid's perfect. My pan doesn't have one. What are you looking for? How do you know when it's going to be finished? You want it to be soft, but it should feel firm, like there's a sort of good, strong coating. It looks like it's not quite set yet. No, it's not set yet. OK, cool. We'll keep that lid on then. Mine's ready, so I'm going to have the big reveal here. You can see the one, the egg that I broke there is a little firmer than the rest. And actually, mine's still a little soft. It's still very uh, gelatinous, so we're going to keep that going a little longer. It actually feels they, they're, they're quite solid to touch. That, I'm saying that's ready then. Be ready to take that off the heat. It's <laughs> exciting. OK, I'm taking that off. No, shall I, can I ask, shall I just put it on the, out here in front then? Yeah, no, yeah, that's ready there. So you can have a little theatre at the table if you're really interested and take the lid off with the steam all there. What is the chilli sauce for? Uh, that's for drizzling over the top at this point here. So to add a little bit of warmth and a little bit of sort of syrupiness and extra flavour on top. As well, you can pinch sure. a little bit of smoked paprika on and it just adds a bit of colour, a bit of vibrance um, to the eggs as well. What, drizzle over the top of the eggs? Like a couple of spoons drizzled on, sort of artistically. <laughs> I hate that you've not done this already. I'm like, oh no, here we go. I feel my artistic side coming out. So I'm going to do the same. Oh, yours is better. Look at that. I've got some of the spring onion that I saved earlier just to give it a bit of fresh colour because the green in this, it does wilt slightly as you go along. And this just really sort of helps you to eat with your eyes. It makes it look that little bit eat better. Eat with your eyes. Love that. Well done, Stuart. That looks great. Check this out.
want to see pictures of yours as well. So make sure if it's gone to plan, which it should have done if you've been following the recipe along with Stuart and myself, make sure you share your photographs. Let us see what the end result looks like. And make sure you share those photographs with Co-op and Park Run. Look at that.